I'm like, did you get it? It was the... Cl- no. It's just like nope. I'm standing wide in the middle of the fucking shot. Wide open, clean shot. I, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 15 feet away. I see it coming. There's no Maybe trees. Maybe too close. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But... That's okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Curling Nation Episode 7, Tabs Handicap. Today we talk with Joe Cool, Joe Polo from the High Performance Pro- Program, the Team Young Bucks. We talk about curling outside, um, some other Bonspiel stories which are pretty fun. Also, thanks to the Great Dane for some very t- tasty beer. Uh, we've got the Scotch Ale. And which one was this one again? This was the uh, Old Glory. Uh, the Old Glory APA, which is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for them for taste for supplying us with some tasty beer. Uh, but now we got Joe. <laughs> All right. Well, he's on the show today. He's won last chance a few times with the stack team. I don't know how many times because I'm too lazy to look it up. Uh, he's at least two time runner up of the Madison Cash Spiel. He's got a measly bronze medal. He's got a gold medal. He's the oldest young buck. He's the 2020 male curler of the year. Joe Cool himself. Joe Polo, welcome to Curling Nation. How's it going, man? Doing great. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Joe, uh, yeah, you're the 2020 curler of the year. I don't know how long have they been handing out that award. Do you have any idea? Um, I'm not sure how long. I know I got one back in, like, 2010 as well. So it's, Ooh, been, really? it's been a while. Whoa, yeah. two-time two t- two 2020, <laughs> yeah. two-time male curler of the year. Do you feel like Tab won it for you this time around? Well, she's <laughs> kind of the better half of the doubles team, so yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, what uh, what's going on? Anything? Yeah, not a whole heck of a lot. You no, know, the, there's no life, curling going on, is there? Stay home as much as possible. Not, yeah. not much curling at all. Um, being part of the high-performance team, we are able to actually go and practice at our club a little bit here and there. So um, trying to stay loose and kind of be ready for the World Championships coming up since our doubles team is is uh, the team this year. So hopefully that still goes and, and so that's try to in, be ready for that. Is that in Calgary? Is that right? Is the mixed doubles in the Calgary bubble? They, I don't remember. They haven't officially announced it yet, but oh. it's supposed to be somewhere in Europe. Oh, somewhere mm-hmm. in Europe. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Nice. So we'll see. Do you know uh, when is that supposed to be? Uh, it's, it'll be the end of April, like from like okay. mid-April to end April. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, I have done some research. Thanks to the USCA directory. <laughs> they have been giving out the Curler USA Curling Athletes of the Year Award since 1987. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Um, and sure enough, 2010, Joe Polo. There he is. Brownie, have you ever won it? <laughs> I have. I have the 2000. <laughs> Uh, you probably deserve it. I was going to guess You had a pretty good 2000. season that year. Yeah. I won the mixed and the men's both in 2000. So, whoa, <laughs> wow. I got it. So that's pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I think I uh, I, w- I had a good season. So, but now that... here's a trivia question for you, Joe. <laughs> Who okay. was the female winner in 2010, the same year that you won? Um, was it your sister? Nope. Nope. Mm. She did win it a bunch of times. 2010. Though. Yeah, well, she she's a good guess. Um, four times. She's so much better than us. <laughs> your sister is one of oh, four Al- times, Allison? Brownie. Dang. Al- Allison. Potter? No, Allison's another good guess. She's won it at least. She's she's way 2010. better. 2010. I'm gonna go Nicole Jornstad. No. No, it was a teammate of. No, it wasn't. She wasn't my sister's teammate. Debbie. Two thousand. Debbie. Alex Carlson. Alex Carlson. Alex Carlson. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, Good job for Alex. All right. 
Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does anybody want to take a guess at who the 1987 winner was? <laughs> well, I got the page open. <laughs> the first year of the, the first award. year. Le- Lisa. <clears throat> Lisa Shannonberg for the female. Lisa was Not the female bad, yes. winner. Yes, you're right. Yes. I was actually, Way to go. I was actually yeah. asking about One point for me. Nice. <laughs> uh, male, male winner. Pusty. Ooh, probably a good guess. Nope. Uh-huh. Not a bad guess. Hmm. Apparently, it's a horrible guess. 87. Two, two-time champion, Paul Pustovar, but hmm. not that year. 87. Hmm. George Godfrey. <laughs> Bud Somerville. Bud Somerville. Bud Somerville. That was, I was going to be my uh, guess. Sure. I thought that was too too obvious. They won the Olympic trials that year when he was like, I don't know, he's old. He's, mm-hmm. He was already old. So... Uh, you got, so, where are you playing? You're curling in Duluth? Yep, at the deck. Okay. So, you and guys, just, uh, so what, you, you can go in there? Right now? So, yeah, the, the governor's orders have basically closed all the arenas down, but since uh, we're technically getting a stipend and stuff, we're technically getting paid to curl, so You're the governor athlete. gave us a... We were technically a pro athlete, <laughs> so the governor gave us a uh, a uh, get out of jail free card, and we can go and practice. So we're just signing up to practice on whatever days, and the ice crew's coming down making the ice for us. And so, did they make that exception for all days. professional athletes, or or were curlers the only exception in that? And you're just a professional athlete lumped in with all the other professional athletes. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, I, I'm not sure of any, any others, but, you know, like there's the basketball, hockey, football, those, those type of guys are, are all getting, getting the, getting the play. Got it. So do you go, do you go practice with like Schuster and Plies or, or do you just practice <laughs> well, by Dr- yourself? Well, Dropkin lives in town, so I'm mm-hmm. practicing with him a fair amount, practicing by myself a little bit. Um, last time I was down there, Schuster and Plies were there, so Got it. I get to BS with those guys a little bit and see if they can hold the stick for me a little bit here and there. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, sure they don't hold it straight. Well, <laughs> did Plies actually yeah, throw stones, or did he just take did he just take a picture of the ice <laughs> and then tw- tweet about it throwing well, stones? He he always does that first, and then then he'll throw a couple. <laughs> a couple. That sounds about right. I like yeah. to give him. I like to give him a hard time about that. How he needs to actually go on the ice, and I don't know how often he does. But yeah, he he's really good at taking pictures from those little benches behind the sheet. Uh-huh. You know, just kick them into the near house, and yeah, it, it works out for him. I complimented him he, one year because he one time because he took a picture from the far end i was like oh that's going the extra mile <laughs> to, to make it look like you practiced if you walked all the way to the other end so you know he, he's one of those guys that doesn't really need to practice a whole lot so you know he he's just uh putting in the work to get down there at least <laughs> sure well, so good. is nobody else using the deck it's just you guys <clears throat> It's just us right now. I mean, the all the hockey's shut down. It's basically just us. There's no other curlers around. It's pretty peaceful down there practicing by yourself. Wow. Mm. That's got to be weird. Yeah. So, Joe, tell us a little bit, uh, how, where are you from and how did you get into curling? I might know this, but maybe other people don't. <laughs> or maybe other people care. Well, <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Uh, originally from Bemidji, Minnesota. Uh, that's where I learned to curl. Uh, I started when I was 10 years old. Had a buddy that wanted me to try it with him, actually. And so we, you know, we were actually on the same team for a couple of years when we first started out. And um, I just, I really enjoyed the sport and got, got to curl against some guys from different towns and different and things like that and just kind of got me hooked. Did you play other sports and and then curling just kind of took over or yeah in high school 
uh, I played football and baseball. Um, I, in middle school, I played a little bit of basketball, but I'm not very tall, not very fast, couldn't <laughs> shoot, so that didn't <laughs> hurt me. <laughs> so, that void of the... Um, yeah, I guess so outside of football and ball, it, curling kind of was, was my jam. So Nice. That's cool. Does this guy that got you into it still play? Would we know him? No, his name is Anthony. He, uh, he curled through, uh, but never really competitively in a few together. Um, shortly after starting, I uh, started playing with John Chandler, who some of you guys probably know, uh, just from playing in the Last Chance and some of the other spiels. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, those are kind of the Bemidji guys in in my age group. What's your favorite bar in Bemidji? Oh. Slims. That's... Slims. Absolutely, that was a good Slims. One. Yeah. The... Uh, the keg and cork was good back in like the late '90s, but I don't know if it's the place to be anymore um ken cork is is always a good choice that was one of the favorite college bars anyways um i, I guess the reason yeah, i like slims cool. is just the burgers are fantastic there and just they used to live next to or used to be next to pete's pete fenson's old place so we'd always go over there for lunch if we were out for practice or something got it got it I uh, I spent a lot of time in Bemidji, as you may know. When I was, uh, this is about the time you were starting to get remotely decent at curling. Um, when uh, like late nineties, uh, playing with some some Bemidji Bemidji folks, and I spent a lot of time in Turtle River, so I like the OP. Oh, yeah. They always treated me that, well because of who I was yeah. there with. Um, yeah, it's actually uh, right next to my wife's parents' house, so I spent a lot of time over there as well. <laughs> nice. I played. Uh, I played volleyball in sub. I subbed in summer league at the at the OP volleyball <laughs> league a couple times. <laughs> I went up. Craig, some reason like much a volleyball I, player. So I can't. They yeah, must have been I, desperate. Yeah. I can't really see you uh, crashing the net on those. Yeah, he's not a frontline hitter. That's <laughs> no, no, Cody was though, and I was good enough at setting the ball to him. And they needed another dude. It was like, yeah. I think it was me and Cody and like three girls, and that was it. Like we had that was the team. That's how badly they needed a player. They only had four, so they pulled me in. It well, was a good ratio for you. Yeah, well. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. Um, what else do you want to tell us about? I Mike rattled off a bunch of the things that you won, uh, but let's get a few of those few of those other things out of the way, and then we'll uh, get into some other hey, fun um, conversations. Hey, Brownie, do you, do you, uh, yeah, do you, yeah, do you do you have any vi- visual rep- Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can, can yeah, I trophies yeah, or anything? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I may have uh, had that in, in my possession a little bit longer than you have. Although you've had whoa, it for a few whoa. years. Whoa. The gauntlet yeah. being thrown down. <laughs> yeah. The, our, our name might be on there a little bit more often than yours. <laughs> when you were on the team, I would agree. You had definitely yeah. uh, <laughs> a higher winning percentage. The team went downhill after you left. Um, yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> so, Craig, that's but, when you uh, start, started winning the trophy a little more? Yeah, when Joe quit mm-hmm. being on the – when Joe wasn't on the mm-hmm. team anymore. So, so it was a lot easier to beat Pete at that point. You know, it was. <laughs> and I think that Pete – Pete's a good guy, you know. He's a good curler, but – he gets way too much damn credit because, <laughs> like, you you and Rojeski, like, I don't know, you're just like these, I don't think you ever got as much credit, maybe because you didn't own a stupid pizza place. Um, <laughs> but, like, come 
national, like, all bond spiel season long, you guys might be okay. I mean, you won plenty in the U.S., don't get me wrong, but all of a sudden, Nationals shows up. Hey! How's it going, Elsa? Sorry, hi, Elsa. Elsa wants to say hi. Hi. Say hi. hi, Elsa. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> It's a professional it's, podcast, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so was crawling all of a sudden, national championship <laughs> shows up. And for like, you know, the first two or three days, they're just the same team that everybody knows. Like, they're pretty good, but they're not that great. And then all of a sudden, Polo and Rajeski show up, and they <laughs> miss like four shots the rest of the week. And they beat the snot out of everybody. Sounds about right. Yeah. And it's so annoying. It was super annoying. Yeah, we were, we were really easy to beat the first three, four games of the Nationals. But uh, once we got mm -hmm. rolling after that, it was we tried to be as tough to beat as we could. So, yeah. I mean, so. I, if, uh, well, I'm right about 50% on national championships when I play. So, <laughs> we either win or we don't. That's, well, that's pretty good. That's a lot better than mine. So, <laughs> yeah, you're so you're the oldest of the young buck. The young bucks are one of like the. I mean, they're one of the HP teams. How how did you end up with those guys? Did, I mean, <clears throat> well, uh, short straw. Yeah, short straw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, played with uh, Schuster for a few years as alternate, just because I was trying to take a little bit less time away from, away from home. Uh, okay. having a having Elsa who just showed up on the podcast here and just wanted to be home a little bit more and so went through the Olympic process with him and uh, then I had a shoulder surgery in that off season so that the next season I didn't really play men's I just played a little bit of doubles and so I was looking for a team the following year and talking with Drobnik uh, and the coaching staff and they felt like uh, Dropkins team was was a good spot for me to go, just because they they needed a little bit of experience and uh, kind of a little bit of a cooler level head person out there, and it seemed it seemed to fit with with what I do. So that's kind of how we ended up getting back together or getting together, and uh, it it seemed like it seemed like it worked pretty well last year. Um, I mean, I've played league with Corey for like four seasons now and played the last chance a few years with Alex and, uh, and coach. So, you know, we had some familiarity together anyways, and it worked out pretty good. Nice. Another stack so team for the, for the people last who chance. don't know who coach is. Can you tell <laughs> us who coach is? Okay. Uh, Mark Fenner. Okay. So Mark Fenner also from Bemidji and he's an Astros fan. Even though they're cheaters and <laughs> cheaters. horrible people, yes, he is. He is. Uh, He's sticking with it. Um, he is, and I don't understand it necessarily. But what's your take on that, and why? Why do you still associate with him? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the sad thing is, like I, I've always kind of been a closet Astros fan. <laughs> Oh, man. All these years. Oh, oh sorry, Joe. Your audio is cutting out. Sorry. Sorry. It's, it's, sorry, it's, yeah, the, sorry. The, You're cutting the out. Getting so, really so, bad. Yeah. Um, it's just... Yeah. No. I. I don't know. Like I, he, I've always kind of followed him. I for whatever reason because I probably wanted to go to their stadium and I liked their logo. I think was kind of the reason I started following them a little bit. Sure. And is this a is this a big Craig Biggio fan? He was a little guy. Joe's a little guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all yeah. it's all about the second base. You don't have to have much of an arm. Yeah. Right, Joe. Is that, yeah, I feel bag, like that's that's right where it, Joe was. Was it Bagwell too? Yeah, Bagwell yeah. played yeah. first. Yeah. Juiced a lot, I think. Yeah. I think Bagwell juiced yeah, a lot. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. He won't admit to it, but I think he did. <laughs> But who didn't so, yeah, in like I mean, the late, I, like, late 90s, early 2000s? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would say the same thing. I Like, that was a team that was easy to, like, sort of pull for uh, because you didn't, like, hate them. Like, there's a lot of other teams yep. in baseball that you might have hated, mm -hmm. and the Astros were never one of those teams until the whole cheating thing came out. 
and now like For you sure. gotta if you weren't like fully invested in them, I feel like you just gotta throw them under the bus and run over them a couple times. <laughs> Better, I think he should be under the bus with him. Like yeah. I told it to him too, so now it's out there for everybody to hear. All seven people who okay. listen to the podcast. <laughs> well, I'll make sure he knows. <laughs> I think he does know. I think Craig's told him in yeah. no uncertain terms. Uh, that's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you you have you have a young you have a young kid at home like going around with the young bucks. Is it like being at home when you travel on the road with them? I mean, do you have to be like, come on, guys, we have don't watch for cars when we cross the street. <laughs> um, I've I've kind of got I mean, to be the you don't the you don't have to throw them all that, under yeah. the bus. Just yeah. one or two of them would be great. No, I like they're they're a little bit scatterbrained from time to time. I got I got to be the dad and kind of take care of them here here and there. But for for the most part, they're they're good guys to travel around with, and I get to live vicariously through them. So nice. it works out all right. Good deal. <laughs> when they talk about all the all the fun things that they're still doing that you used to do and you don't get to do anymore. Like that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just sleeping cause, cause I'm tired from yeah. having a three year old. Yeah. yeah. I know that I used to go to bond spiels, like have a good time, stay out too late, drink too many beers, hang out with all my friends. And then once I got kids, it's like I went to Bond Spiels and I just couldn't wait to get back to the hotel and take a nap. <laughs> and, yeah. Like it's still nice Sounds to see all right. those other people, but not not as nice as a nap. Not at the expense of a nap. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll talk yeah. to you, but not right now. It's nap time. Yeah. I like it. No, I get that for okay. sure. That's, um, that's definitely part of it now. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking uh, before before we came on on air here um, about curling outside. We've got a little. We've got some guys here in Madison who started a little outdoor rink. Um, Hash brown Monona outdoor curling. And we're we're trying to have Hashtag, not something that resembles <laughs> curling um, outside. And uh, Joel played a game today. And I know that you've played a little outside. Nice. So if you want to tell us a little bit about playing outside, uh, your experience playing outside. Well, my experience playing outside has been in the Bemidji Winterfest. So we're uh, playing. There's two rinks that were kind of flooded out on Lake Bemidji. Um, one of them is curling and the other one is hockey. So there's hockey going on on one side, there's curling going on the other side, and uh, the ice usually starts out okay because the sheet's a little bit slow, and it usually slopes towards the shore in the morning, and then once cars (laughs) start parking out on the lake, then the rocks start falling towards where the cars are parked. (laughs) Really? So, oh yeah. (laughs) That's bizarre. (laughs) yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. It, so do you have to tell people to park and, on the the other side of the sheet to <laughs> even it out? They just got even it out a little bit. Yeah. And, well, at, at that point, people don't really care a whole lot. <laughs> um, usually, I sweep a corn broom out there because it ends up snowing, so I'm getting the snow out of the way. Perfect. And but uh, so I've I've really been able to uh, take advantage of knowing how a little bit of snow on the ice is going to affect the rock. Yeah. And uh, so we actually won the spiel one year. We won won the D event because we lost our first game or whatever one, one year. And so it, it's it's been a lot of fun, a little pretty interesting. So it's and definitely it, something I would love to do again. So. Are those full-size rinks, like end, end, end to end, are they full, full size? Or are they no, a little short? No, it's, it's uh, quite a bit short. It's probably – 50 feet short so yeah yeah, it's it's uh, there's probably uh, 30 feet between hog lines yeah (laughs) um yeah the rink that we uh did in monona it's um backboard to backboard is like 100 feet sure Uh, and you know back lines are are a bit shorter than that but um i tried to i tried tried to throw a rock with curling shoes on tried the full slide uh didn't make it very far 
um because i'm wearing like two i'm wearing pants with uh liners in them and long johns uh and they don't stretch as well as curling pants do so uh, -huh. uh that didn't work so uh i i uh channeled my inner mary bro broman yes and uh did, yes. did that the rest of the time and it actually worked Love out it. pretty well good move I, uh, I would but, just go with the boot slide. So, yeah, the problem was I so couldn't you're just, slide. You're just kind of. I couldn't get into the well, lunge. The, the the boot slide is you just kind of scurry out like Fred Flintstone and drop to your knees and give it a little toss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think I've done that. <laughs> yeah, that's nope. that's a good one. Never done that. Not either. a bad play. Mm. I threw uh, I threw two stones. This play, this park is only three blocks from my house and. So it's great. I, I, I because it's only three blocks from my house. I got like roped into helping out, uh, <laughs> probably more than I, I should be or need to be. Um, yeah. But uh, so I went down the other day and uh, you know set the hacks in for some guys and helped them get the stones out. And after the hack melted in, I just grabbed a stone and kind of did the the you know nineteen. 40s throw from the hack with you know kind of a the pick ice it up maker and, throw yeah i did the ice maker throw but i knew i needed to throw it a lot harder than the normal ice maker throw <laughs> and i got it i got it most of the way down and then i did one slide <laughs> like i just grabbed a step on slider and went and i gave her a heave and i got it i got it over the hog line, I was short of the house, but by the, like, not too long after I got, I left, the guys that were playing, they were getting them down there with, I mean, they were throwing it hard, but they, they were able to play end to end, um, doing normal slides. But we, uh, we flooded the ice a couple weeks ago and we just, it's, we actually, we set up next to the pond. Uh, the city didn't want us out on the pond for various reasons um they don't want you falling through so we yeah and they didn't you know they thought that like there'd be no way to have any chance of keeping people off of it and like we'd have to flood sure. it way too often because people would skate on it and everything else so maybe if we set up on the grass we'd be able to kind of keep people off and have flood so much but uh so we took an ice auger and you know plugged a hole through the through the ice and then had a big old pump and just started pumping pond water and it was it's kind of like this color of my beer mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a little brown it's a, it's a little brown yeah. it's a little brown it, it there's was some worse. leaves the there's some leaves in there yeah it looked real That's bad okay. at first with some impurities um, mm -hmm. it's okay it's gonna be a little better but I mean, you didn't All set the up curly a ice ever canister and stuff like that. No, 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 none of that. <laughs> no, 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 we don't. Um, I, th I think I, somebody I put tried a to bucket put some with some holes in it in when they were pumping it out, so they didn't get as many leaves. But that that was about it. I I think that was that yeah. was the extent of what I saw. That's fair. Yeah, I didn't even know they did that. So, um, yeah, it was pretty yellow, yellowy brownie, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> The first time, so my whole life, I mean, I've curled a zillion games and been a part of this sport forever. And the first time I ever flooded was like four days ago at 10 o'clock at night with a headlamp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't see. I'm out there just hoping that I like get all the spots, like make, make the whole thing wet. <laughs> and, but then, it, like, it was getting cold. Like, it was, it was just so it's over freezing 20. as fast as so you can put it down. It's freezing <laughs> fast, and so like, I'm not sure if I'm missing spots or if it already froze by the time like I get to a spot where the light from the street light down, you know, <laughs> 200 yards away is shining right that I can see that it glares. Like, did I miss that or did it already freeze? Or what? So, I'm not much of an ice maker. Worst ice yeah. maker. Um, I'm not taking much credit for 
for the actual conditions of the place. But and and fortunately, the the uh, c- city of Monona is letting us borrow uh, the wa- water for it. Um, so for the for the base of it, we pumped pumped it from the pond. But for the top layers of the floods, there's a, a outbuilding that's right next to it that they've allowed us to ho- hook up a hose. So I bet they're just giving flooding. you the water. You don't have to give it back, do you? I hope not, but yeah. I hope not. <laughs> well, they'll get it back eventually. <clears throat> we're gonna, so, yeah, we're so, gonna donate it back into the park. Yep. Um, <laughs> really, that's yeah, you're just you're just down. watering the lawn. There, Real right? kind of you. Mm-hmm. Real yeah. nice. Good. So, fun trivia question: I was actually on the ice crew, the uh, 2008 World Championships, when Craig was the representative. Okay, I was there. Where, yeah. where was that? Yeah. I, I received... was on the ice crew in Grand Forks. Oh, Grand I thought you were going to ask us a question. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I'm going to get this wrong. Who was the assistant so... ice maker on the third <laughs> shift of the midday draw? Uh, that's, that's about it. That was third shift. I'd go and flood at midnight. <laughs> wow. Nice. I, uh, yeah, was, I remember you fun. being on the ice crew. I remember a very late night ride home from you one night possibly from the yeah. red pepper ah uh, um, yes the red pepper i think this would have been you know like friday or something after we were knocked out of this the the spiel world, world um, championships of the world out of the it's world championships yes yeah. after we were no yeah, yeah. After, after we were no longer competing uh, i believe that i spent uh, evening out very late and joe gave me a car ride <laughs> back to the hotel oh boy joe maybe you should i was a nice guy back then uh, i do have a i do have a question from earlier uh you guys mentioned the ice maker throw yeah what's the ice maker throw? yeah, yeah. i haven't heard that term before basically you just Give it a shove from the hack, and you never leave the hack. You like shove it with your hand, or you just like kick it with your foot? Yeah, with with your hand. Yeah, with your hand. Got it. Yeah, you just kind of crouch down and give it a shove from the hack, mm. and never leave the hack. Got it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Got it. A lot so of I couldn't do. Well, if you're, you know, when you're doing it as like you know the professional ice makers at national championships and stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't have to push the rock all that hard to get it to go all the way down because they've yeah. made, you know, 26 second ice. Um, Perfect. But, you know, like you couldn't do that, obviously, at most normal clubs. Yeah. My my version of the ice maker throw was more of a. Whoa! <laughs> 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 but. Uh, and try not to fall down while I did it in my, you know, in my big snow boots. So. Brownie, <laughs> I, you played at a pretty significant outdoor event over in Russia, didn't you? I did. Tell, tell, back... That's There's got to be some stories out of that. So in about 2015, I think it was, um, the... There's, they, they used to have an event. They might even still have it, but it's not It's not quite the same as it was. There's something called the Red Square Classic is what they were dubbing it. And they wanted okay. to have this big, like, European curling tour event, world curling tour event outside in Red Square. And the first year they had it, like, Brad Gushu went and a couple teams from couple other like good european teams were there and it was so cold that they were playing like four end games or they'd play eight end games but they'd have to go inside and warm up after four ends i mean it was like 20 below zero wow. and they're trying to curl outside and i remember seeing parkas. pictures of these clowns yeah yeah they're wearing everything they own and so you know, we're an HP program at that time, and Phil Drobnik was our coach, and he said, hey, you got an invite to go to Moscow. Uh, do you want to go? 
and I'm I was the only one who knew that, that it was like 20 below a lot the year before when they were trying to play. <laughs> and I'm like, not really, and, you know, like. I'm guessing the ice isn't that good because there was like a couple. Of, there was like at least one, maybe even two bond spiels that we were gonna miss that we wanted to play in because they were gonna be good prep events before nationals, and uh, we knew this wasn't gonna be good. But basically, everybody wanted to go, so we're like, "All right, let's go." And uh, so we show up, and the weather's like, it was like thirty. I mean, it was like it wasn't cold at all. It rained a couple. It rained and snowed. On us while we were on the ice. So rain is good for, hmm. for ice, played, I think. Rain, rain is really good for music. our ice, yeah. <clears throat> well, it was like a light, misty kind of drizzle. <laughs> and so, like, it was kind of interesting, though. Like, we were we were one of the more experienced teams there, and we learned that, uh, we learned that essentially the ice was getting re-pebbled every couple shots. So because of the rain, yeah, yeah that's good. And yeah, we figured it out. So yeah. Like, who was it on might your team? Twenty-three seconds. Who was on your team at that time? Just so we know. Croy, Croy Nuremberger, Croy and Zezel and Alex Leichter. Jared Zezel. Um, Sean Baton was also those, on the team. We had, we had a five-person team. Okay. And Drobnik was your and, coach. Uh, oh, yeah, was an and HP Phil coach. came too. And he came too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was an HP coach, and he was our team coach. Got it. And uh, but yeah, we figured out that you know, like you throw like a rock or two, and it, it was it was pretty decent speed. But then if you didn't play that line for like three or four minutes, enough rain had fallen that it was like pebble again, so it'd be slow again on that track. And the other teams didn't figure that out, and so we made it all the way to the final. Um, because we managed the Zamboni lines and the rain and the snow better than anybody else. <laughs> um, but then we got to the final. We didn't manage. Like, we, we played a team that managed the, the Zamboni lines and the horrible speed a little better than we did. So we lost the final. But, like, during the whole game, there's, like, techno music playing and <laughs> disco lights. And we're playing this final and there, I mean, there's like, first of all, Lennon's tomb is like 50 yards away from where we're curling. <laughs> like, Lennon himself is in a, like, sarcopha- what's it called? Sarcophagus. There you go. You know, like right there. And here we are, a bunch of stupid American guys playing right next to the Kremlin. <laughs> And uh, there's like a thousand, I don't know, not a thousand, a few hundred Russian people outside. We're playing against a team from Russia in the championship. They're playing techno. The guys with the like the the MCs like standing basically on the ice doing commentary. So it was like the <laughs> and doing... one tour of curling is what you're saying. Do you remember the and yeah, one tour of basketball? Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 It's like the and one. He's tour like out there, like hyping it up, like before the shot. He's trying to get the crowd up, and like I, he doesn't know anything about curling, but you know, like we don't know what he's saying. Like we might, he might be saying, "We're gonna hang these Americans if they make this shot," you know. So we lost the game, but that might, I mean, it might have saved our lives. We don't know. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask literally if you were, if you were afraid to like win that game. That was still Putin's r- r- Russia then. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's still Putin's well, Russia. Yeah. Still Putin's Russia. That's pretty I'm cool. not sure that I would say I was like afraid to win, but I was. Um, I wasn't overly disappointed when we lost. There I guess um, we got some really great pictures. Like it, it's 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 kind of cool taking a picture with like. Outside curling and like that big, mm-hmm. the Kremlin in the background and the cathedral with the funny uh, St. Basil's cathedral with the, I don't know, those funny kind of cone things on the top. Yeah. So, yeah. They're called you know, spires? the thing from the Tetris. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> They're the Tetris. Yeah, the thing from the Tetris. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's about right. The thing from the, te- the building from Tetris. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. 
Anyways. I, I wish I so had I got a better so option, but I don't. I, I had one experience ahead, playing outside with rain. We were we were actually playing the Corbell Challenge back when they had that against Paya Lindholm at <laughs> Rockefeller Center. Oh my lord! And, oh, I remember and they, that. They I put they put this. ice on Rockefeller that, yeah. Center. Yeah. And they were going to play the game at like two p.m. And they're like, you know what, guys? Rain is coming in tomorrow. We're going to play at 8 a.m. instead. Ugh. Like, okay, well, that's a little bit early for us, but we'll, we'll, go, we'll go with it. And so we start playing, and they had, like, tarps over the ice over the, overnight so that, like, the rain didn't accumulate and whatever. And they pulled the tarps off in the morning. We went and practiced, and the ice felt great. Yeah. Like, it felt like it was 25 seconds, but the sheet was about 20 feet short. Okay. Which, which was a little weird and so we get done with the first end we got two and the tv crew came out and said uh we got to play that end over um we didn't we didn't catch uh half of the end so uh <laughs> let's let's start over with the first end We're like, uh, okay, we're playing Pale Lindholm here, guys. Uh, we can't really give up too many points. So we we uh, played the end over, and I don't remember if we got one or whatever. And We continued to play, and about the fourth end, it started drizzling a little bit. And uh, that's the point where they started scraping and pebbling between every end because the ice was getting so bad. <laughs> and the the draw weight got to be roughly peel weight. You had to throw it about as hard as you could to get it to the house. Uh, James Dryberg was playing with Pay at the time. He, he actually made a double, and we all cheered because we didn't think anybody could throw it that hard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was that was quite the experience. And then uh, right about uh, two o'clock, when we were supposed to be starting, the skies opened up and the whole sheet was full of water. And wow. so it was a good it was a good move to move it up. But <laughs> yeah, we we had it was an interesting experience, anyways. So I forgot about that. What year was that? <clears throat> uh, we were playing with Tom O'Connor, so it must have been. Like oh eight or oh nine. That's what I was gonna guess. Oh eight, oh nine. Yeah. Right in there somewhere. And uh, did, weren't you playing like every end? Weren't you going the same direction? Like you could only play yep, one. Every end one was direction? the same direction. Yep. Yep. <laughs> was that, was that always the plan, or was that did that was that because of no, the rain? That that well, that was always the plan because they didn't want to. They didn't have enough room to put hacks in and stuff on the other side. So the the how, like the back line, <laughs> the back line was only like three feet away from the boards on the far end. Okay. And it was already twenty feet short. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's it. good planning. That's pretty cool. Nothing like major TV. Center. Early. When was it? It was yeah. It was... was the tree all What's lit that? up? And when what? Like when in the year was it? No. The was tree it wasn't there winter, yet. Winter? It was, it was like November, like early November, if oh, I remember right. right. Got it. So it was still okay. warm in New York. Yeah. Jeez. Hmm. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. I got some. Yeah, there's wow. some guys. There's some guys that play east of town here by about a half an hour, a little bit less. Uh, and so these, they would have seen, like, I don't know if this was after 06 Olympics or if this was after 2010 Olympics. They just saw it on TV and they thought it looked cool. And so these eight guys, uh, they all decided to pitch in and buy one stone each. And one of the guys, one of the guys has a farm uh, that he lives on. It's like a doctor. He rents out the farm to so somebody farms the land, but he owns the farmhouse and the barn and everything. And so next to the barn, they just 
flooded a sheet for ice skating, and then they decided they were going to curl. So these eight dudes all bought a stone. And Did they buy them from you? It, yeah. And <laughs> they start they start curling, and uh, they invite us out, you know, and I think we – I don't know if we went the first year at all. Um, we, we meaning you They invited and dad. dad and I. Yeah, they invite yeah, dad okay. and I out. And uh, but these guys – they're super into it. And like every Friday, these guys curl and they've never curled inside <laughs> and they've still never curled outside or inside inside. And it's fantastic. Like there's, I think there's 10 of them now. I think that they like, they expanded because the one or two of them moved away, but they're still members of the club, <laughs> which is you know, like eight of them, but they needed a couple of subs when these guys were gone for work or out of, you know, or if they moved. And I want to uh, go watch this and see what a gong show it is. <laughs> it's fantastic. Great. They've got some of their own rules that are a little weird. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a couple of years later, they, they, they decided they liked it so much. And, like, the wives were all friends. So, like, basically it was the guys would just go and, you know, have drinks and socialize every – Friday night. Yeah. And the wives would hang out and they'd have a big bonfire. And the first time I went out and played with them, uh, they've got this like ice cube maker that makes shot glasses. I don't know how, like, Mm -hmm. like you fill it up with water and then you let it freeze. And then you, when you pull them out, it's a shot, it's a shot glass made of ice. And they've got a bunch of house of hearts. Yeah, we do need that for house. They've got a bunch of these things, and uh, so the way they start every single game is they fill up these things. You take a shot of some, you know, schnapps, and then you chuck the <laughs> shot glass against the silo. Like, there's no shaking hands. Nice. Like, they don't. They didn't know that <laughs> because they never heard. It. Like the way that they started a game was. Okay, cheers. <laughs> and then and then they go and curl. They play like these five end games. Uh, and this is like amazing. now they've got now they've got more stones. Um they've like they bought a complete they s- traded in their eight and they got sixteen. Uh every year they have a bond spiel where they have to come and borrow an extra sheet of stones because they they get two sheets worth going because they get like 10 teams of people who have never curled inside um and they get it catered Dude, and I've, like i've been out there this and, sounds fantastic uh, this has to be a curling it's nation like special expose mm-hmm. like it's, here it's yeah. way better than normal curling nation though. on report yeah curling nation on <laughs> site yeah live <laughs> live coming at you live from cambridge um and they have like all these flags out. Last year they had a fireworks show at the end of the spiel, uh, like legit fireworks. Like it was better than most small towns Fourth of July fireworks. Probably. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Nice. I don't know what they, where they got it or what, but like, they, whatever. The dude's got a farm field, so they just, all right, let's have a fireworks show. They knew somebody who knew somebody. Uh, you can Here's get good fireworks anywhere Boom. these days. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fantastic. Like and it. uh, mm-hmm. these guys are great. And they've got it figured out, though. Like, their ice is actually pretty good. Um, hmm. Wow. Like, I mean, it's it, cha- it varies based on the weather. But, like, I was out. I've curled twice. I've been out probably four times to, like, watch. But... I curled twice, and both times, it probably felt like 22, 21, 22. Mm-hmm. So, like, good. you got to throw it kind of hard, it's but not bad. it's That's nothing crazy. Um, <clears throat> I've played on the worst And they're playing, like, full length. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was a good time. Yeah. So, another outdoor spiel what? that, Craig, you might, you might know a little bit more about it. Do you, do you know about the one in New Zealand? So, like, they've got I've heard one of it. Lake. I, I don't know much about it. Yeah, they've got this one lake that it freezes over, 
like once every four years thick enough to where they can actually curl on it. And it's, it's okay. only thick enough for like a couple of weeks. So there's like, if, if they ever get a cold snap, there's somebody out there checking the ice and then they just start calling all the clubs in New Zealand and, and uh, Australia. And they're saying, okay, the spiel is this weekend come. <laughs> and then they just have this big spiel out on this lake. Apparently it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun, pretty good time. But I, I told the guys I know out there, hey, invite me if you're going to have it and I'll see if I can make it. But I don't, I don't know if it'll ever happen. Boy, that'd be, that'd be an expensive plane ticket. Like, a yeah. week it, it would be, like yeah. I need to go to it, New Zealand like tomorrow. Three, three days in advance. I, I got to yeah. get to New Zealand now. <laughs> if you got if you got enough frequent flyer miles though like i you, you got a chance like it's probably not too bad it, oh yeah for sure yeah. you might be able to do it because if they haven't sold the frequent flyer tickets yet at that point then it doesn't matter if the flight would have cost you you know ten thousand dollars if yeah. if they've still got <laughs> frequent flyer tickets who's available, going to new zealand then... in the winter nobody nobody's going to new zealand oh, well and, it's and summer there, there. No, it's, it's winter time there yeah. Well, it's then, winter, it's winter for them, winter. summer for us. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Who's going in the winter? Yeah. Nobody. No. During so August, it's that bad. probably not a lot of people are going there. I think there's an outdoor time. one in Manitoba, too, in, in Winnipeg, called the Iron Man, I think. Is that a big one? I think. I don't know. I've heard of it. I keep threatening to go up there, but <laughs> I haven't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. How many uh, how many times you won the last chance, Joe? Yeah. Um, just the last three times I've played. <laughs> just the last three times you played. <laughs> I won the last time I played too. So I, I still I still call myself the defending yeah. champ. You probably won it three times since me, but I'm the, still yeah, the defending exactly. champ as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> Yeah, who, I actually, your, the first uh, time I won, been? first time I won, uh, we had uh, Pete Fenson, uh, Tim Drobnik, and Phil Drobnik. Stacked. So that was, that was a heck of a team. The uh, second time was Rojeski, me, Corey Dropkin, and Alex Fenson. Stacked. That was pretty stacked. And then the... Uh, <laughs> The most recent time was me and Rojeski and Al Alex and Mark Fenner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here, 2009 Hibbing. I beat, that's the last time I was, that's when I won the last chance. I beat you guys in the semi. Yeah, if I remember right. And you, you won the last chance and the stand. Fence and Brown Cup yeah. at the same event oh yeah 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 it was out it was on the ice time. it was it was pretty pretty epic i mean we, we actually probably had tens of people that game, watching that had game. normal team i think yeah anders we had a normal team with, yeah. there yeah anders yeah you, you were and testing out anders for the next Darren year boys, wasn't it one deer i never with travel Darren's? with one of my yeah. One of my one rules deer. in life is I will never go out of town with more than one deer at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, good. Probably one deer that. that's a good, good rule. Yeah. Good rule. Good rule to have. I had Zach Jacobson and Perko. Oh, boy. Oh, oh God. Perk. Perko. Yeah. Oof, that's a crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's something. Uh, we I'm were Minnesota. We were a mess. So did you guys, did, yeah. did they move your game up into the arena? Because it was, it was oh yeah. such such a big game. No, it was no, the semifinals. So semi by that finals. time, all by the, the time it was already in the arena. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we I, one thing I do remember about that game is we went out there the first end and we won the flip and we just started hitting everything. And about halfway through the first end, or maybe it was just into the second end, Pete realized how hungover we were. Yep. And <laughs> that we we probably just... could not make a draw <laughs> if we needed to. Like you could make it. Anybody can make a takeout in Hibbing because it is just it was super straight. Stick straight. But yeah. like we were we were rough. I mean, like we're trying. I, to... I remember that. 
we're trying to not like get sick, basically. And uh, I, so, I remember like, you one pulling end... garbage clans closer to the closer to the back of the sheet, just just in case. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> I think there's a chance that Zach needed one during the game. I'm not yeah. sure, um, but uh, we're out there and we've got, but we've got the hammer, so we're like, well, screw it, let's just hit everything as long as we can. <laughs> And uh, as long as they let us, and it was like the third it's end, or, and somebody, somebody threw one. Whoever your lead was, it was Anders playing lead then. Probably. It was Anders. It was Anders that year. Yep. So Anders threw one in the. Pete called for a guard because he wanted to be playing draws and taps and stuff, and he threw one in, and Pete was so mad because he knew that he needed to, like. <laughs> mix stuff up so then we just blast it for another end and then finally Long like the next end up. he throws a guard he throws a guard and then you guys keep trying to come around it and it's impossible because it doesn't curl and we are you know we're just throwing them like 100 miles an hour and we make a hit and roll and then we make a hit and roll and then we make a hit and roll <laughs> And you guys keep trying to throw these little impossible finesse shots, and we scored like four on you, and then, like the game was over because yeah. we were ha- able to hit make a couple hit and rolls, and we never. <laughs> I don't know that we threw a draw the whole game. Um, that sounds about right. And so that's that's how we beat you, just because you, you were a little too slow to throw draws against us on ice, where it was almost impossible to throw draws. We can't have to curl anytime. All right, so we got uh, qu- we got questions that we ask all all of our guests. So, uh, Brownie's got them somewhere. You got them, Brownie? <laughs> yeah, Hold Craig, on. you got them. He's got to find them. Uh, I already asked you how you started curling. What's the best piece of curling advice you ever got? Um, no, I think it was probably from Luppy, Mark Lupsick, is in. It's uh, just try to th- always throw the right weight. Um, I mean, you can you can miss the broom by a couple inches if, as long as your weight is good. You can make a lot of shots. So, I, you know, I, I learned a lot from Luppy over the years, and he was always my slide doctor growing up through in Bemidji, and I, I learned a lot from him. That's an old name. I haven't heard that guy's name in a while. <laughs> Been around he, forever too. He's one of the one of the nicer guys in all of curling that i've like i don't know that i've ever really heard anybody say anything bad about him i mean he's probably beat enough people that there's enough people that are mad at him that somebody will say something <laughs> bad about him but <laughs> probably um, yeah i uh i i always really really enjoy having a chat with mark so yeah he's a good uh, guy. what is your what is your favorite club Anywhere in the world, except it can't be one that you have ever considered your home club. Um, well, I always liked playing in Madison because we had a really good record there. We, uh, <laughs> Shut up, Joe. We Pick won, won a few spiels there. Uh, yeah. Won the Nationals okay. there. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> I was there for that. <laughs> I was there for that, too. Uh, I, was I was watching on the, the bench, yeah. but I was there. I was probably on the bench ne- yeah. next to Mike. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, but uh, actually, the World Championships in Cortina was probably the the most beautiful place I've I've curled, and it, it had a really cool atmosphere. It was in the arena for the nineteen sixty Olympics, where they had the hockey arena there. And Is they, that the one? They, Go ahead. Sorry. It, it, it used to be outdoors. And then they put a roof on it, but they left the all the whole one side as windows. I was just going to say, the did, mountains. didn't they have women's worlds there a couple years ago? And they had problems with it being so hot, like the ice got uh, all messed up they or might something. Have. Yeah, they that's might the one, been. right? Is that well, the one? I think that's the one. I'm not, I'm not sure if women's were there or not, but it, it, maybe, it maybe definitely could have been. Maybe it was another event. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. There. Yeah, and I'm. That that no. was was the one where there there was a rock climber that was uh, was uh, rappelling from the rafters with a rock in a backpack to throw out the first rock and his rappel got screwed up and he basically free fell for like forty feet straight to the ice. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, so that that was opening ceremonies. 
<laughs> the, the That's what I was going to ask you about. Like, yeah. is that is yeah. that the one where the guy like fell from the ceiling? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. How, like, yeah. how hurt was he? Probably hurt. really. He broke, he broke every bone on the one side of his body. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that story. I haven't heard that story. That sounds painful. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, we all gosh. thought we saw somebody they, die. That they, was that was pretty impressive. Ugh. You said mountain climber. I was yeah. going to be like, that's one of my favorite Price is Right games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite bond spiel? Well, the Olympics is a pretty good bond spiel. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 well, outside, outside of that, We're not talking championship. That, I'm going gonna... to say the House of Hearts is probably the best sure. bond spiel. Yep, that's uh, good I mean, time. House of Hearts. I mean, House of Hearts. I mean, all all of us have enjoyed that over the years. Um, Last Chance is probably a close second, but House of Hearts is uh, one where we've had a ton of fun and raised a bunch of money for charity. So I, I'd have to go with that one. I like it. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer. Good answer. It's a popular answer. It's a good answer. All right. Yeah. So I already found out how you started. We asked that early on. Um, and then normally I ask if there was any rules that you wanted to change, what would they be? But then I heard that some other podcast asked that question. I don't want to ask it unless you really have one that you're just kill. You're dying to get out. Any rule change you're just dying to have. I don't want to force it though. Um, no, like I, I do enjoy the five rock free guard zone now. So like I, I do like keeping with that. Uh, I don't see where, uh, I mean, could go to a six rock and it wouldn't hurt my feelings any but that could get a little bit crazy it would get a little crazy i think i i'm gonna just jump in here for a second about a rule change because you're a mixed doubles guy like aficionado now i think they should make a rule change for mixed doubles where they should put up a center and a corner every end and then each team throws six rocks instead of five okay mm-hmm. and like i don't know how long it would have to be delayed before you could start hitting anything you know like whatever we can figure that out but i think mm-hmm. all the play is always right in the middle but if you had the forced center and forced corner every end you could get some different you could get some variety in the ends instead of every end sort of being the same like i mean you got the power play yeah. now but like I, I don't like putting rocks in the house necessarily. So you'd have a center in a corner outside and nothing in the house. Yeah. Got it. I like. And it. then I'd make it so you had mm-hmm. extra rocks though too. You, you threw in. six rocks instead of five each. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Three each. That'd be. That'd be. It's bad for Joe and Tab because Joe has to throw in more. But you know. yeah, that would yeah, be that, bad. I don't, for I don't like that. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Unless People you can go four and two, like... and that's even better for Joe. Yeah. Tab, Unless Tab can go four and Joe only has to throw two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Point. it's right. funny. People like traditionally the the male throws the middle three rocks and mixed doubles, and like we just like to say, you know, we we have the best player throw the middle three, so that's why Tab throws the middle three. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So. I'm busting your chops, Joe. Yeah. You're way better than I am. Pretty sure everybody knows that, but I know you enough. Yeah, but Tab's way better than he is. Oh, that's so, also true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Last question I have for you for this is, you can go to any bond spiel you want. It can be competitive. It can be a drinking spiel, a charity spiel, whatever. Who are your teammates? Any teammates in the whole wide world? Yeah, and uh, we've allowed people to have a five-man team, so you're going to have a drinking member or, you know, you, you can have a five-man <laughs> team. You can have a five-man Or They also don't team. have to all be curlers. Yeah. You're going to need at least one yeah. or two other curlers, but they don't have to all be curlers. For sure. And I've thought about this one a little bit. We, we, Pat Simmons and I have talked about putting together something that we call the old stars. So since Pat's retired, I'm uh, getting close to it here. So we're, we're talking about getting uh, guys that have basically retired from playing 
competitively recently, you know, and uh, get together. So it would probably be me and Pat and Chris, who we've uh, talked about doing this together with. So those two guys for sure. Hold on, you, gl- oh, I'm you glitched, sorry. You cut you glitched, out for a, glitched a little. Who'd you who say? Was that? Oh, sorry. Besides, besides Pat, Pat who'd you say? Uh, Chris Spa, Bumpy. Oh, yeah. Bumpy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bumpy. Yeah. Uh, so, He's no fun whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, no fun. Zero fun. So, uh, it'd be those couple of guys for sure. Um, you know, and I, how, how about you three? I, I don't think. Oh, I've, man. Have I ever curled with you three? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. 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 Yeah, I keep that, I keep that, trying that, I yeah. keep trying to get you to It sounds like a lot of fun. And uh <laughs> and people just make more money and they want to curl with mm-hmm. you more than I do. So yeah. I, sorry man. I'm trying. <laughs> I'll carry carry your brooms. Yeah. Have I never <laughs> played a game with you? Ever? Gosh, I don't think you so, Craig. So, so we have so six man team? I'm so old. We got two guys sitting out? This is gonna be a lot of fun. Well, huh. you know that. Yeah, uh, at the last chance, if you, if you bring five, it's a it's a bad play because then the guys that know doesn't have a drinking partner. Oh, well, that's a good point. Yeah, Gotta I bring like six, six man so. team. New new well, category. New category. Yeah, man, you can have a six man team, not a five man team. Yeah, but the one person out is drinking at a bonspiel, and that's been no fun whatsoever. So, I'm sure yeah. you could find somebody to drink <laughs> yeah. with if you're the. Uh, Odd man. Uh, that's, that's true. That's what I was just gonna yeah. say. I would be totally fine if I was a if I was the fifth player, like mm-hmm. just going and drinking with people and not watching the game at all. Like, I'm gonna be okay with six <laughs> man team though that. too. Mm-hmm. If I'm allowed, yeah. I mean, like, I might check in on the score every couple ends when I had to go pee or something. <laughs> yeah. but, I'm I'm clearly doing everything that we can because I'm the worst curler on that team. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Thanks, Joe. Funny stuff. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything, uh, any more questions for Joe? Any serious questions? Or uh, you no. got anybody you want to thank? Why Why would sponsors we start? Or anything? Oh, yeah. Do you oh, have yeah. any sponsors, Joe? Sponsors. <clears throat> you know, we haven't had very many sponsors the last few years. So if anybody wants to sponsor, we'll, we'll gladly accept. <laughs> what are, who are the USA yeah. curling sponsors? I mean, uh, well, you've got they, well, you've got a web, web page. Your team's got a a yeah. site, right? Like web page and yeah, social media. Some swag, it's, right? y- What's your young bucks? Yeah, yeah. young bucks. Is that youngbucks dot com? Uh, youngbucks dot. Pre- pretty sure org. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> youngbucks dot. <laughs> ha- hash, or... Hashtag youngbucks. Hash got, brown youngbucks. Yeah, youngbucks gear. Yep. Yeah. They have, they have some. And hats they have some and good hats. Got, got some. Got some pretty cool gear. That's so. Pretty, that's, I like. I like what you're doing. Or what they're doing, or yeah. you know, if you're I, riding their coattails or whatever. Uh, so the website lob, is youngbucksusa.com. Young bucks, yeah. youngbucksusa.com. We'll put a link in the yep. in the show description. <clears throat> I, so. I keep lobbying to get a well, bigger rack question. on my deer than uh, than yeah. the other guys. But... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Craig's got a question. I, I got a question. Um, how much cooler is Tom than the rest of the young bucks? <laughs> Because I think it's like four times as cool. I tell but, you what. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna put you in the hot hot seat here. Tom is the funniest guy on the team by far. He he is he is definitely a treat to play with. I I, I enjoy the hell out of playing with Tom just because he's he's always got some sort of. Uh, some sort of a one-liner that's just going to make you laugh out there, and he, he keeps it pretty light, and and uh, he's he's a uh, pretty darn good player as well. So yeah, he's he he's pretty darn player. cool, Craig. Yeah, awesome. I well, like Tom. The rest of the guys screw him. I yeah. like you, and I like Tom. The other guys, ah, screw the rest of the guys. They're <laughs> not invited on They're the show. Right well, we'll take that back. Joe, yeah. <laughs> uh, we really want to thank you for coming on. Taking a, taking some time out of your day to enjoy the Curling Nation podcast. You're probably you're right on the edge of our first day lister. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to put you right up there. If we had tabs on, then you'd probably be in the A list. Uh, yeah. Well, for sure. For you know, sure. I mean, yeah. she carries the team. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Um, you, you can come on again and tell stories. Sounds right? good. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Anytime, guys. Right. Good curling show. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Cheers. All right, Curling Nation, that's it for this week. 
Uh, happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Whatever you're doing, we appreciate it. Um, thanks to Joe Cool for joining the show because that was great. We had a good time. Uh, we don't have any updates because uh, COVID stinks. So if you want to hear about something or talk about something or whatever, email the show, curlingnation at curlingnetwork.com. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Curling Nation. Follow us at Instagram. We're at The Curling Nation. If you want to give us a dollar or two for uh, more bad sweaters, if you watched the last episode or whatever else, uh, Patreon, we're at Curling Nation. If you want to just listen to us, Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Podbean. Oh, obviously YouTube if you want to watch us because we, we are handsome. Uh, also, thanks to the Great Dane. They're the best. We had some great... Uh, what do we have this week, Joel? We had Scotch Ale. We Scotch had Ale, some, APA. Uh, Old Glory APA. It was delicious. Uh, we, we always appreciate it. That's all we got. Thanks for listening. We're out. Good curling.